get you to my list. All right, and we are live. Let me stop. Oh, stream. Okay. You all still hear me, right? Okay, good. Yes. Okay, good. All right, Beanie Blessings. Welcome to Deadpan Dope Tuesdays with me, Deadpan Lizzie, the Beanie God. This will be recorded on Facebook Live and YouTube. If you don't want to be seen or heard, please mute your mic and turn your camera off. Please unmute yourself if you do read and mute when you are not reading out of consideration for your fellow artists. This is a mic for all mediums and beanies. For those who don't know me, I'm an artist among other professions. I am very honored and excited to have our first feature for Dead Pound Dope tonight, Jane Spoken Word and Alvy on Bass, um, two New York City artists and musicians. A few ground rules, no hate speech or bullying in this space, please. If I hear or see any of that tonight, you will get the boot, no questions asked. This is a safe space, like I said. Like me, many of us have parallel careers and are here to unwind after a long day's work. So please leave the crappy attitudes and beef behind before entering our space. I don't believe in trigger warnings as life is one, but if you feel the need to give one, please do so. All right, each artist will have four to five minutes perform in the open mic and then we will get to our feature and we will do a second open mic um, after Jane and Alby perform. I will um, announce who's on deck throughout the evening. A um, couple things about what's coming up with the word is right here. Let me just get that calendar out for myself. On uh, every first and third Monday of the month at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have Cafe Generalissimo, host of Brian Generalissimo Franco. Um, on the second and fourth Mondays of the month, we have Moist Mondays with Maras Prada, who's our executive producer of The Word is Right, and she is here with us tonight. Um, on the second and fourth Tuesdays of the month, we have at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have Food for Thought with Marie Medina. It's a lovely writing workshop in the afternoon, so if you're around, catch that. The first and third uh, Wednesdays of the month at 9 p.m. Eastern time. We have Write to the Mic with Nick Pelly Logo. So he does a little writing workshop and then you bring your prompts to the mic. Second and fourth Tuesday, uh, Wednesdays of the month, we have more poetry with Christopher Moore, who's here with us tonight. Uh, Thursdays and uh, Fridays, Marissa does an Instagram live. So follow her at Prada Painting Poetry and the word is right. And the first Fridays of the month, we have, um, at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Bronx Art and Fun Hub, A Ray of Sunshine with Ed Potastic, Lady Tiffany, and Ron Mark Thompson. We also have Freestyle Fridays with Ray Jane on the last Friday of the month. That's really fun when we get to cipher there. Uh, second Fridays of the month, we have Great Debaters with Christy Scribbles and Marissa Prada. Our, our Cash Slams on the first Saturday of the month. Um, and then Poets Anonymous with Tori Lutz on the first and third Sundays of the month. And coming up later this summer, Marissa and I will be doing a a uh, queer uh, open mic and workshop that comes from the Out Loud LGBTQ anthology we are publishing this summer that will debut at the New York City Poetry Festival. Also follow Marissa's Press and Publishing House, Red or Green Books in New Mexico. She is putting out her 40th book this year, which is a gun violence anthology. So thank you for your activism and your commitment um, to the arts and community, Marissa. We appreciate you. And Marissa, I can do you just check? Special announcement: We are going to be partnering with Gorilla with uh, Garage Poets. Uh, they're out of Boston. Uh, we'll, we'll be partnering with Garage Poets on Friday nights to bring you the Garage Poets of a mic with Jeff Taylor. Awesome! We love Jeff Taylor. He comes here sometimes. Hope you join us tonight, Jeff. If you're watching, Marissa, can you just check that uh, waiting room for me, please? If, let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, you got to make me co-host. Oh, I thought you did. All right, make her co-host. There you go. All right, well, we're going to start out with an open mic, like I said. So on deck, we have our Marissa Prada. And up to the mic, we have one of our favorite hosts here at the Words Right, Christopher Moore. Wait, am I going first? Uh, unless Christopher doesn't want to go first. No, he, he never wants to go first. I'll go. It's totally uh, fine. Okay. All right, um, you'll be the sacrificial poet. 
I'll be the sacrificial poet. Onyx, Onyx H two O's in the room. What's up, Onyx? All right, so um, I'll I'll read the one that I I, I read at um, David Leo Serra's open mic earlier. It's a, it's a little sad, but I I think it's a good way to commemorate my dog. It's a poem that I wrote out my dog when um, he passed away. Uh, and so I, I don't read this enough. I haven't done enough grieving over that. Uh, I've been too busy, <laughs> but it's pulling up. So if you give me just um, a moment, here it comes. So um, the poem is titled Simon because that was his name. All right. I dropped some steak on the floor today, called your name listened to quiet and remembered you're gone. You've been gone since December 29th. The sum of what's left of you, of your life intertwined with mine is a four by six inch pine box with a hinged lid filled with whatever remnants are recovered from a crema cremated rat terrier body. I knew it was time for your life to move on after 14 and a half years of companionship. Woman's best friend, when you couldn't stop coughing and you went into heart failure. Your chest sounded like razor blades on a chalkboard. Your chest moved and I knew every flinch was met with flecks of pain. Your nose ran dry. You stopped panting and just lay there. I could see your eyes to mine. We always knew each other's next moves, like an old couple, odd couple. You'd been here for almost half my life. How could I repay that friendship? When I first found you, you were shot up with a bunch of other puppies in the desert outside Las Cruces with BB pellets. We found one on an x-ray in your shoulder a few years later when you had kennel cough. I was a broke college kid, couldn't even feed myself. I thought I'd find you a good home. You cried the first night until I put you in the bed and you remained there for almost 15 years. How could I repay that friendship? We moved together. You invited my human kids into your life. You allowed men into the bed you once slept in. You taught me how to be strong that time I almost died. And now you were coughing and your lungs sounded bad and your heart was failing. And as much as I wanted to specialist cure you, to fix you, there was nothing to be done and I knew I would never prolong your struggle. We had a great Christmas day. You hardly coughed at all, ate lots of the smoked turkey, cuddled with my girls, wagged your tail, and we had a great Christmas day. So when I loaded you into the car and we went to see your doctor, I held your paw the entire way. I held you and whispered to you, everything would be okay. I was crying. I was scared. I did not know how to say goodbye. I held you in a blanket close to my chest. I'm sure you could hear my heartbeat, heartbreak. She gave you a sedative. I was crying. I was scared. She gave you the final shot and I felt your body go limp and cold in my arms. And I belted out a grief to share through the ringing phone in the lobby. You were gone, but I was there to say goodbye. And you are still beside me each night in that pine box. For when I die, we will go to ground together again. My dear friend. Oh, I'm so sorry about your puppy, Marissa. I'm sending you much love. And I know that's hard. I've lost two dogs in my life, and it's like losing a family member. And 
it's very hard and I'm so sorry that you had to go through that and it takes time to to grieve it there's no there's no time on that but um may may their memory be a blessing and I'm glad that they brought so much love into your life and to your family so thank you for sharing that beautiful piece um Marissa Proud is our executive producer here at the word is right she is a publisher for writing room books please give her a follow um proud of painting poetry she is such a huge part of our community she keeps us going um she is she's one of the only reasons i was able to get a third book out this year so thank you for for everything you do we love you all right let's keep it going y'all all right um on deck we have martin and up to the mic now we have christopher moore Okay, thank you. Um, I wrote some new shit tonight. Uh, I was at Spofest tonight, and I forgot that I wrote that I registered to read tonight, so I quickly had to come up with something. So this is new shit. <clears throat> Your hugs are the warmest I ever had in a long while. Looking into those sparkling eyes turns my brain to mush, along with maybe some incoherent babbles. My heart rate always increases with every hug you give me. Playing with your hair around me acts like a hypnotic trance with my eyes and possibly my brain. How come I always lose myself when I look into your beautiful face? Thank you. Love that new shit. Let's go. Chris, awesome. Awesome. Anything else you'd like to read at the moment, Chris? Uh, no, I don't have anything else I'd like to read, but I do have more poetry tomorrow night. So come to that. Yes, uh, go check 7 out more. To nine. Yes, go check out more poetry out here on the Word Is Right. Okay. Um, it's a nice, nice, quiet, open mic where you can share new shit or old shit. Or we just be hanging out and talk. It's a nice time. Um, so thank you, Christopher. Also, I forgot to say at the beginning of the show, happy Pride, because we haven't had a show during Pride One Love Platform. So happy Pride, everyone. I'm an openly queer person, as most know. So be out and proud and loud and be just be yourself. All right. Keep this going. All right. On deck, we have Onyx. And up to the mic, we have Martin Parker. It's good to see you. All right. Good to see you, too. Thank you. From when I go off camera, I usually be able to see these. But I thought I'd start with a uh, memory of a friend of mine from when I was in Japan. <clears throat> and I call this MLR, possibly to protect the innocent. We met on a late night train to Sendai. Upon a tag, she signed her name while standing on luggage to let people by, and added these words, avoid the plane. She turned me on to prog folk tales with ice cubes as thin as the dawn of the day, while the horse she rented by mucking out stalls in her dreams like Ian was skating away. At later meetings, judgments were made with praise for a seasonal Renaissance scene whose origins into illusion would fade and disdain for a painting described by a queen. She conjured up visions of dungeons she'd build where dragons would fly with thread in the sky. Then casually through her lips, the words spilled. By 35, she'd rather die. I snapped a shot, but she turned away shy toward clearings that forms like mountains surround, while cherry blossoms floated on by along the former castle ground. Somewhere I still have that tag she once signed the night we met on that crowded train. A pearl of wisdom gleaned from her mind, and ever I endeavor to avoid the plain. Oh, that was lovely. Thank you, Martin, for sharing that. Appreciate Thank you. you. Do, do you have, have uh, 
Oh, another, yeah. Go another ahead. one about the same length as another my elegy is for a friend of mine who was an exchange student to our high school. Uh, this is called the Purple and Suited Ambassador. Let's all give thanks to a dear old friend, that handsome ancient servant of God who scouted the worlds in the service of fields from shores of Malaysia to Unionville sod where we did meet in those harrowed halls, awash in a time-warm oil lamp's light, with some who saw signs of teenage waste and buckwheat expired on Saturday night. Symbolically marching in the band, where, while there he cut a figure fine, all suited in purple with accents of green, denoting the royalty in his line. He played the mascot with feather-dressed head, never afraid of people's scorn. Though controversial, he'd later attend that smaller Cornell among the corn. He came to the district out of the blue, inviting me out to dine with a brood of embassy kids by the, hail, by the hall of the fox, with talk refined and fabulous food. He made the most of his journey now done, collecting his patches around the world, searching to find his star on the map, shining so bright with memories unfurled. Istirahat dangan salamat, my friend. Kawan saya, rest in peace. And this is in loving memory of Jamal Harim Abdullah, whose name can be translated as handsome, ancient, Servant of God. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, Martin. I always appreciate um, you, you uh, memorializing the people in your life and how beautiful you write about them. So thank you so much for sharing with us. Yeah, you can follow him on Instagram at Parkwillian. Uh, do you have anything coming up you'd like to share or promote? Uh, nothing that I'm doing personally other than going to many of these as I can. <laughs> <laughs> I can put my information in the chat about the two anthologies I'm in. Oh, so congratulations on that. That's wonderful. We get the anthologies. Martin is a part of Follow him at Park Quillian on IG. Um, all right, we're gonna keep going. Um, and Terry Rose Jurtson has joined us in the room tonight. She's also part of the Fierce 15. Get her book, The Chameleon uh, Chronicles, Ooh. as well as the other four. Yeah, congratulations, Ismail. It's the other 14. Um, authors with the first 15. Um, all right. So on deck, we have Marianne Peterson and up to the mic. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. It's Onyx. Yes, yes, that's correct. Thank you so much. Peace, peace. Welcome. Everybody. Thank yeah, you. Welcome, Beanie Blessings. Happy to have you here. Thank you so much. This isn't healthy and surround sound surrounding me. A complex soundtrack track, track, tracking on a scratch disc playing over and over. What a wonderful world. Sky's dark, like your eyes when you shout at me. My eyes, full of wonder. How? Searching for what I thought was there, grasping at air we used to share, but this isn't healthy. A world class word knockout. These words are suffocating me. I'm trying to talk myself off this floor. It's cold here. These vinyl panels are angry. This carpet soaked in my tears and there's no space to misunderstand. This is all my fault. Didn't mean to spill my heart onto you to make a mess of your empty soul while holding your tears sacred. What has this become? Here, left only with phone calls riddled with snappy responses Frivolous conversation in the blink of an eye. Medieval verbal exchanges going nowhere fast with no future in sight, no fight left in me. A complete blackout and you vanished, leaving a, trace of, a trail of shards, memories stained with disdain in my heart left to ask, how dare I love you so much? How dare I learn to breathe you? How dare? I translate my braille for you. Thank you so much for having me. 
Yeah, I'll give it up for Onyx. It was beautiful. Oh, that was it. Woo! Sorry, I just had to cheer her real quick. Woo! It was very vulnerable. Thank you for sharing that. Um, hope you come back to Dead Panda up again. Um, do you have anything you'd like to promote or a plug coming up? Uh, I just launched my website, onyxh2o.com. It is finally live. So I do um, have Onyx H2O apparel where I sell t-shirts. It is a faith-based brand. Um, yeah, if you want to check me out there. And I will be releasing my book in August, my first poetry book. So those are the things that I have going on right now. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, our pleasure. Hope you stick around and come back uh, on the 21st. It's always the first and third of the month. Well, congratulations on your book and your website. I'll give her a follow, check out her book and feel free to drop that. Uh, we're streaming live on Facebook or on our YouTube page or you can drop it in our Zoom chat here for our friends. Um, so check out Onyx's stuff. It's amazing. Congratulations. Um, happy you're with us tonight. All right. On deck, we got Stephen Blaine, and up next, we got Marianne Peterson. Hello. Hey, good to see you, Marianne. It's you too. This one's called Our Final Goodbye. I wrote in 2011 in May. It was for my grandfather, Carl Arthur Peterson. Your rest is coming soon. All your suffering will be ended. You'll be happy and healthy again. Your spirit will live on. You're only reaching out towards your true home. Your physical body is weaker than your cancer fight first started. Your mind and body are coming closer together in agreement to let go. Hope you go peacefully in your sleep. Your physical self will no longer be. I'll remember you. You're one strong. Your life has been long. I'll carry on once you're gone. I'll be like a rock, nice and strong. Positive will live on. More of the negative will be washed away. I love you, grandfather. This is yours and my final goodbye. May sweet angel sing you to your rest. It's time to let go. This matter of fact. Oh. Yes. And you just you just said in the chat you have another book coming out, right? It's already out on Amazon. It's my eighth one. 46. Oh my god, congratulations. Eight books. Congratulations. Yep. Oh Thanks. my god. Damn. Good for you. Keep writing, y'all. Keep yep. writing. Do you have another piece you'd like to share before uh we move on? Yeah, yo, can I think I'll do my emotional mind one that I wrote a long time ago when oh, my oh, emotions were drawing me up the wall. Emotions overflowing my mind. Emotions slamming me around again. My mind was still all day long. Night fell in the opposite. I feel nervous and uneasy. I'm worrying again. I'm shocked to have my son holding his tears in. I feel like my son losing his temper again. I need my rest. Emotions don't take over. I'm trying to turn my mind away from worry. What made this happen? I was fine all day. Quiet down, emotions. Quiet down, mind. I need peace. I tell you to stop. This isn't the time. Stop. Stop now. Let me sleep. And so what I'm talking about in there is my firstborn. Yes. I love Marianne Peterson's poetry. I was happy when she comes through. Uh, congratulations on the book, y'all. Please get all eight Thanks. of her books on Amazon. Check her out. Give her a follow if you want to drop your handles in the chat on Facebook or here. Please yep. do. And I'm sure we'll hear more from Marianne later in the evening. All right. On deck, we got Cherry Rose. But for the mic now, we're going to hear a little music from our friend, Stephen Blaine. Hi, Lizzie. Hey, Hi, so good to see you. Hi, Martin. Hi, Christopher. Hi, Terry. Hi, Onyx. Hi, Generalissimo, Marianne and... Roar shock and Jane. Hey everybody. <laughs> How's the Upper West Side doing? It's beautiful. It's good. been really I'll beautiful. Be, good. Weather's I'll be back beautiful. there tomorrow. Good. I'll be back tomorrow. Perfect time of year. Uh, this is a sing a, a sing <laughs> that I. Uh, it's also a song uh, that I uh, that I call. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I'll have to call it Juanita. I got all fucked up in a fight Red lights are flashing bright I'm lying in the street On this cold and broken night 
people I can see are looking down on me, but I ain't really scared. What will be is gonna be. All I can think about now is sweet Juanita. Oh, Anita, my oh my. Even the roses blush when my Senorita, my sweet Juanita, walks by. Angels will only wait. We'll go out on a date. I'll put on my best new shirt and my favorite shoes, and we'll do this stinking town till the moment comes around. Oh, and I'll tell you just how much. I've always loved you, and all I can think about now is sweet Juanita. Ooh, Juanita, my oh my. And even the roses blush. When my senorita, my sweet Juanita, walks by. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, Stephen Blair, he's so enchanting. I love it. He is. He's a magical. Yeah, but that's like me. it's like a death song, though. I mean, I, I don't know. Hey, death songs can be gorgeous. <laughs> well, if then it, it was not happy, right? He, I guess so. Yeah, well, I think so. Hopefully, some people die happy. I thought yeah. the song was gorgeous, so thank you for sharing it. Thank you. Very pretty. Um, and you're you're Stephen Blaine on Spotify and SoundCloud and everywhere, correct? Every everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. Well, follow Not that him. That's such a big deal. Just that it's a fact. But it's, but it's, yeah, yeah. It is a big deal. You know, follow him, y'all, on SoundCloud, Spotify, where you can find Stephen Blaine's music. He's a gorgeous musician and great person. Uh, we got him to meet in real life, and he is, um, he is as charming in real life as on Zoom. So thank you for being with us tonight. You're we sweet. hope to hear thank more you. of you later um, you. today. And we're gonna we're gonna have a couple more artist and then we're gonna get to our awesome features so um i think brian is driving so on deck we have rorschach but up now and she's part of the fierce 15 get her book the chameleon chronicles please welcome terry rose jertson Woo, terry rose! and that's her awesome cover yeah it's gorgeous I think you're muted, Terry. It's a good thing I was muted because I'm all over the place here. I didn't even have my glasses on. <laughs> all right. Um, this is from the book. Um, it's called Pathway to Peace. Leaving the pain behind, letting go of pain, bringing new freedom letting go of anger. What good is there in holding on to that? Letting go of rejection. My time will come when it will come. No use fretting when fate doesn't move quickly enough for me. I will not keep holding on to this pain. I will keep singing this refrain, reframing pain until pathways to peace are all that remain. And then I have a tank on the same page on page 15. 
And the funny thing about this tanka, I, I was looking at it the other day. You can read it in reverse and it still makes sense. So I'm gonna do that. I'm, I don't know what that's called. I'm inventing something new, just like you. You're inspiring me. <laughs> we have to come up with a name for that. Uh, a well, tanka that- there are contrapuntal poems that you can read forward, backward, and side to side. But this was a tanka, so it's got it's already something. So I'm thinking this is might be something new, right? Well, what is it? What is it exactly? <laughs> it's a tanka, it... but it can be read in reverse. Contra a reverse tanka. cool. Contra, <laughs> what? Say that again. <laughs> Contra putal tanka. It's hard to say. I'll, yeah. have to, I'll have to come up with a good Japanese name for we it. We have to we have to shorten that up somehow. <laughs> Ron Ron Mark Thompson came up with Panku, so perhaps he can come up. He's good with titles, so maybe. But I like that. Y'all keep keep inventing new styles of poetry and putting it out there into the world. It's I'm gonna just call it a reverse tanka. Conch, you could call it contra tanka. Contra tanka. <laughs> okay. There you go. Like or, or reverse tank, <laughs> either way. All right, anyway. so here it is. My love ebbs and flows far beyond failure and fear. I stand unafraid. General, generalissimo, that's not in there. I'm messing this up. <laughs> Generational curse lifts, healing the wounds of my past. Okay, so that's forwards now gonna go in reverse healing the wounds of my past generally i can't say generational today. oh my god generational curse lifts i stand unafraid far beyond failure and fear my love ebbs and flows so i think it's um, nice both ways right it's beautiful both ways and you know i love it because it gives a nod to the next 10 which was the second launch of Green Books. He's with us tonight. I believe he's driving, but Generalissimo, who Terry said a couple of times, Brian Franco, get his book, which is on the poster of his screen. But also she mentioned another poet in that launch, Ebb and Flow, written by Miro. So get Miro's book, Ebb and Flow, Green Books. And we have a couple of the um, Fierce 15 authors, myself, I'm here tonight, Terry Rose Jurtson, Christy Scribbles is here. She's also part of the Fierce 15. Um, yeah, Marissa's putting 40 books out in a small amount of time, which is incredibly impressive. And she's, she's a machine. Getting work. She really is. She's getting out. <laughs> she two believes two in us. Jobs and two kids. <laughs> she is Wonder Woman. She Wonder is Wonder Woman, Woman and a goddess. And she believes in our art and she pushes us to get out of our comfort zones and create. And without her, many of us would not necessarily be able to do that so thank you for everything and for red or green books marissa we love you so much and thank you terry um where where can everyone find you online and get your book and pre-order and all that cool stuff um well you can find me on ifunny's mom on instagram or you can find me on terry rose jertson on facebook um or you can email me um and to get my email though i I think um, you would need to contact me on one of those two other social media platforms so I can give you my email um, because I have PayPal. And if you guys want to order this book or uh, the other book I'm in is the erotic anthology. I'm, I also have a couple of those laying around for sale. If anyone's interested in that one, that's, that's a very interesting book too. And a lot of people are in that one, including you. <laughs> Me and you, Marissa, and um, yeah. 20, 28 other very brave female poets around the world. I'm very honored to be a part of that. Um, also, y'all, if you want to get all these books like Ebb and Flow and the Chameleon Chronicles and Christie's book and Brian's book and Touching Tongues and Kundabini, you can enter the raffle for Poet Palooza on August 7th with Red Green Books and the Word is Right. It's all the authors from the upcoming Out Loud anthology, which is a literary art anthology. It's Touching Tongues, it's the Fierce 15, it's the first 10, it's the next 10. And we're all gonna come together on a big Zoom call and just party and read our art and share with the world. So enter the raffle because you can win, um, you can win a collection of the Fierce 15 books, right Marissa? And then a copy of the anthology, is that correct? 
Yeah, so we'll actually, we're giving away three things. So the raffle is, well, it's $5 to get a ticket. If you go to redergreenbooks.com, uh, red is R-E-A-D. If you go to redergreenbooks.com, you can buy a raffle ticket. It's only $5. You can buy five raffle tickets for $20 or 30 <laughs> raffle tickets for a hundred bucks. The first prize is all 15 books that we're giving away. Five of them are international poets from all over the world. So you don't want to have to pay shipping on that. It's over a hundred bucks alone for all five of those. Um, it, then the second prize is the WEMS Erotic Anthology. The third prize is the LGBTQ Anthology. So we are giving away three things in that raffle to try to generate uh, uh, ticket sales. So if you could do that, please, all of the proceeds that we raise from the raffle are going to help the publication of the LGBTQ Anthology. For those who don't understand everything that's involved in publishing a book, it's a lot. You got to pay for artwork. You've got to pay for an ISBN. You got to pay for a copyright. You got to pay for the printing costs. You got to pay for the shipping costs. It is a, there's a lot of costs involved in, in publishing a book. Uh, with the um, with the um, amount of contributors we have, our book is very large. It's so over 150 pages for the LGBTQ anthology. So the it's more expensive when you print bigger books. And of course, it's more expensive to ship. The gun violence anthology that is on the horizon. Again, all the things that we're selling last year and this year, all of the proceeds are being recycled into purchasing more books, into publishing more authors and into doing more anthologies. So uh, there's a lot of things. There's a survivor's anthology. There's a lot of other things on the horizon, uh, but we can't do it without, you know, the support of the community because we're not, you know, we're, we're just a very small press, you know, but to do 40 books in two years is pretty freaking incredible. Uh, so just, you know, if you can go get a raffle ticket, please just go get one. You can't win if you don't get one. Yeah, and join us. It's going to be really fun. I'm excited to. In August, so you got time. August seven. Yeah. August seven. It's probably two p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be like a four or five hour event. I'm in a lot of those. I'm very honored. I'm a part of a lot, like four of those books, and then editing one, well, editing technically editing two, and um, but very honored. And I'm very um, Marissa, when I told her a year ago I wanted to put together an LGBTQ anthology, she said yes, and um, it's now, it's going to be in print soon, and I'm, in, thank you to all the artists and contributors who trusted us to publish them. Um, it's all LGBTQ people. We love our allies, and there'll be another anthology, so this one just represents the LGBTQ artists in the community, and um, I'm excited for everyone um, to be able to see and read their work. All right, and Stacey Dyson just joined us. Welcome, Stacey. Um, we look forward to hearing you in round two. Before we get to our awesome features, we're going to have one more artist with us tonight. Um, please welcome to the mic, who, who has a really awesome hat, and we love hats here at Deadpan Dope, Rorschach. Hi. Hey, <clears throat> hi. Deadpan Lizzie, nice to meet you. Thanks nice for hosting to meet this. You. Yeah, nice to... is it Rorschach? Is that how Rorschach. You several layer, layers of pun involved there and uh happy to see some friends here old friends and happy to meet everybody who i haven't seen before so um when i was in new york in march i wrote a big poem and i'm still editing and transcribing i just wanted to read you a couple little sections from that poem uh which have to do with meeting poetry friends that I've met in the last couple of years via the Zoom Renaissance and actually meeting them. So here's the first section. It's called, We Don't Pay to Play. East Village Sunday, Book Club Bar, Jane Spoken Word, Albion Bass, Open Mics Want $15 cover charge and for you to buy drinks, hauling in amps and equipment for a five minute spot. Hey, I have got a gig. That's not a gig. We don't pay to play. Some do this to play. Some do this for play. Some do this as a play, we do it for life. 
we need pay to play. We do have to eat. We don't pay to play. And then the other section I want to read for you. I love that piece. This is awesome. called Meeting Some Other Friends. This is called Rorschach on Long Island. Another train ride on the Long Island Railroad all the way to Babylon. Rusty Rose waiting, jumping in excitement with handwritten sign. Welcome Rorschach. Therese drives us in her car exploring Long Island, watching the ships lined on the horizon at Fire Island. For the first time, I approach the Atlantic Ocean, dip my hands in the ice water. Rusty tells me to gather up some seashells. We ride on through the little towns. Rusty points out an old church as we drive past. That's the church I used to go to with Kurt Vonnegut. Enjoy lunch at Love Lane Kitchen. Therese takes us next to visit friends, the twins, Jay and Jay. One a painter, the other a playwright, an astrologer. We have coffee and biscotti. We discuss many things. Rusty feels someone else in, her, in the big living room, somebody named Joseph B, who has something to say to the Jays. She does not know what it is. Jay, the painter, tells of a site unearthed in some far off land, at least 10,000 years old, of apparent religious significance, suggesting the human search for existential meaning is older than agriculture. We talk about the war in Ukraine. Jay, the astrologer, has done a horoscope of Vladimir Putin. The most oblique chart he had ever seen, except for the collective horoscope of the Chinese Communist Party. According to Jay, Putin has sown the seeds of his own doom, but how many others will he take with him? I am the only one here who is not Catholic. These people are all sincerely Catholic, wanting to do God's work on earth. They discuss Therese's good works, helping AIDS patients when that plague struck and was not understood. Rusty tells the real story of Stonewall when she was one of the few under siege with police inside the bar and the riot raged outside and of revisionist history of the event and the era ever since. Back at, to Teresa's house, an Italian takeout for dinner with her daughter and son-in-law. Then they drive me back to the Babylon train station and I ride back to Penn Station. Thank you. Well, I mean, I'm a, that was amazing. I'm a Long Island girl, but I also live in Manhattan. I'm actually currently on Long Island with my folks. I grew up in Port Jeff. But that was awesome. I can't believe our paths haven't crossed because I'm very good friends with Rusty and her daughter, Melanie. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll have to hang out sometime. Yeah. Right? I'm assuming you're New York based somewhere. No, I, I meant to say greetings from San Francisco. I'm in San Francisco. Oh, I'm actually that was, in San Francisco. That's my, uh, was my first time ever visiting New York and I had a wonderful time. Oh, and well, you fool. So you sound like a Native eyes. American, but <laughs> I'm actually going to be in San Francisco um, the last week of July. Well, wow. be happy to show you around if you Yes, if you to please. Know Let me yeah. know where we can connect and I'm going to hang out with Joshua Kurnia, who's a part of our Out Loud Anthology, as well as Rusty Rose, um, sure. and I'm gonna yeah we're gonna run the San Francisco Half Marathon. And I'm gonna meet a lot of the Bay Area poets. So yeah, let me know where we can connect. And I'll absolutely. I'll, well, I put my uh, all my information. I just put it in the chat there. So oh, awesome. Well, I'm so happy you're here. It's lovely to meet you. And that is a round out. Yeah, and I love your hat. We love hats here at Dead Pando. <laughs> well, um, awesome. That's a great way to start the night off, y'all. 
Um, thank you all the poets and artists that read in the first half. We'll hear some more artists that joined us in the second half, but we are now ready for our features. They are my dear friends here in New York City. I love them so much. I'm gonna read their bio. So, a poet of the street, Jane's spoken words bring her artistry to a diverse set of venues from museums and clubs to busking street corners and living rooms everywhere. She has authored two books of poetry, Words Against the Machine and Tragically Hip, with art and accompanying music by author Albie on bass, and is currently editing her next book, Love and Light, Poetic Memories of My Friend Christy Amphill. Jane's, uh, Jane's work has been published in National Beat Poetry Foundation's Anthology 2019, 20, and 21, Moonstone Art Center Anthology Protest, uh, the New York City Underground Poets and Artists Anthology, Oh Wow Press, Shadow of the Geode, uh, Boncia Press, Stars in the Fire, and Palo Arabis, uh, Luminous, Rogue Scholars Express, Oddball Magazine, The Bazine, 100,000 Poets for Change Award winner, Time of the Poet Republic, and Word City Monthly, where she was a director of interview and podcast in 2021. <laughs> Along with performing, she conducts poetry workshops online and in person for adults and children, as well as guest hosting events. Albie on bass has earned his reputation as a dedicated musician, improviser, and composer. A member of Cecil Taylor Trio and Big Band, they were awarded Best Performance in 2005, 2009, and 2016 from All About Jazz. He was the house bassist for the original House of Blues in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and a longtime member of two-time Handy Award winner Paul Rochelle Band, in the soul, funk, and R&B arena, he has worked with Daryl Jones, Miles Davis, and the Rolling Stones, Junior Medlow, the Cobras, and Big John Croft, the Fabulous Blends. Whether he's laying a foundation for the avant-garde Mastro Cecil Taylor or handy award-winning blues great Paul Richel, to accompanying poets or leading his own band, he lays a foundation solid mm -hmm. enough to support and convey a tank. Their collaborations, performances, and recordings range from solos to ensemble and include, among many others, founder of the New York Poets Cafe, Miguel Aguirre, poet, political activist, and founder of the White Panther Party, John Sinclair, the Lower East Side Unofficial Jazz Poet Laureate, uh, Steve Delk Sky, Yuko Omoto, <laughs> I'm sorry, I might butcher these, uh, Budo Dante, Min uh, Tonga, and Sura Marshall Allen. Um, you can, they will drop their links in the chat for Albie's website and janespokenword.com. It is my great honor and pleasure to welcome my friends as our first feature at Dead Pando. So please give them a well, warm welcome and beanie blessings to Jane Spoken Word and Albie on base. Yeah! Oh, thank you. And with all of that said, it's been a great night. Thank you very much. Good night. No, no, no. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So nice to see you. Thanks for coming by. Um, Abby and I are going to play, you know, play a little bass. I'm going to spit some words for you. Um, it's been, not yet, not yet. It's been a great night of poetry and uh, really good to see some old friends. So uh, we're going to start with a piece called Solitary Confinement. Interpretation is critical. It's critical. Interpretation. Is critical. is critical. 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 It's critical. It's critical. Interpretation. Critical. Confined by your lies, I realize that we have all been civil lies. the solitary confinement. I'm doing my time, serving my sentence. Spoon. Interpretation is critical. Because interpretation. Confined by your lies, I realize that we've all been civil lies. Sentence to solitary confinement. I'm doing my time. Serving a sentence. Explain. 
interpretation is always critical. Where the heart goes, the brain, the brain, the brain, most of the body. Interpretation is critical. Where the heart goes, the brain. the brain must follow. Solitary confinement. That's an old, moldy old poem that I wrote like forever ago, but it still holds true today. The next piece I'm doing is a piece from my first book, Tragically Hip, and I wrote it a while ago, maybe nine, ten years. The name of the piece is Dreams and Delusions. Welcome to my world of dreams and illusions. Frightmare nights and horror sights and abstract confusions that are born in the dark. Reality appears and disappears. What's so very real becomes at most unclear. So pay attention and open with care. Because the dream police will get you if you don't watch out. Deep expression of a thought gone mad. Ruler of a world where insanities reign. Where disillusion is the illusion that gets lost among the same. Uncertainties of a naked mind, unrestrained by conscious time, dimensions born in the eye of the stare. Be very careful which mask you wear, because the thought police will get you if you don't watch. Ouch. Thoughts lived in secret realities. Orbit the mind and all her mysteries. With secrets locked behind each and every door. Click your heels three times. We're not in Kansas anymore. And the boogeyman will get you if you don't watch out. And the dream police and the thought police and the boogeyman will get you if you don't watch out. Dreams and delusions. Yeah. So the next piece is from our latest book. I left. Oh, it's fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> the next book. The next book was a word against the machine. So this piece is called Mr. America. Mm -hmm. What 
What's up, Mr. America? My kind still ain't up and die. Will you ever be truly experienced? Or are you still just passing time? Passing time trying to make heaven your home. You ain't passing time. You're killing time. Sliding down this street, it's like I've been here before. And I didn't want to be here from last time. Remember last time? Do you remember last time? This could be the last time. I don't know. Hiding from the repo man, my thoughts he cannot steal. I'm hiding from the soul stealers that beckon to me from shadows of mine and time keeps on ticking. And time keeps on ticking. Keeps on ticking, keeps on ticking, keeps on ticking, and time keeps on ticking into the past. Or is it the future? Is this the plan of man to keep us in the state of confusion? Or a murder of the mind to perpetrate the illusion? You ain't wasting time. You're killing time. The next piece, I really like this piece. It's a fine piece. It's not in any book. It's just a piece I wrote when I was in a silly mood, I guess. That's called Smoking Weed. And weed is so bad for you. You with that dope fiend crave that you running and jumping and hugging a friend. Talk to a stranger. Wait. Smoking weed is an addiction. An uncontrollable Jones to paint posy flowers on your face. Make mad, passionate love in silky leather and lace. Smoking weed is lethal. Yet you make it love, not war. A flower in your gun. Dance a dance, sing a song, write a poem. What are we here for? Smoking okay, weed can kill you. You might die from laughing out so loud. Find the old. In inner peace, be it one in the crowd. So, why not try smoking a joint? Smoke several joints until you get the point. Free your mind. Your brain, a joint, 
Yeah, so moving right along. This piece uh, I wrote uh, a concert that Alby was playing with Cecil Taylor on the on the Hudson River at Castle Clinton. And it was a beautiful afternoon and the music was exceptional. The crowd was warm and wonderful and the air was filled with dragonflies. Everywhere you looked, there was just masses of dragonflies. So I wrote this poem right there on the spot. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. The dragonflies dancing dreams of forgotten ancestors. Painting Manhattan skies with brick and glass and neon cells. Abstractions in captured flight past skyscrapers that flash blue and red hot spotlight beams. Piano strings, bass, bass. Bass come and drum and drum. Sway the trees. Lift the leaves. Smile pass through me on their journey to foreverness. as exquisitely as dragons fly. Open your eyes. Spent the day with neon dragonflies playing tag with the sun and the sky. Serenaded by the splendid, invited to the dance. Spent the evening at a noble man's digs and raptured in his trance. Come sit at the feet of the maestro. As he spins his tales of sleepless nights and endless sights, past mysteries to ponder in a sweet, soft voice, he will lull you in, then morphine into thunder. Bottles of bubbles fill time in a glass, flowing verve into memories that smile. Ancient words breathe life to a past, chain smoking Indians all the while. There's the evildoer will make you cry. And the dragon lady with all her lies. 
and mean devils you just had to love and music dreamt from a satin glove starlit nights and lovely ones that stole his heart and perfect days that fell apart and coded names that you never knew. And oh, so many Winnie the Pooh, Pooh, Poohs. So come sit at the feet of the maestro. Take a ride on this common in flight. all will be heard and all will be cherished and all will surrender to his night dedicated to the maestro cecil taylor you are missed my friend That's for Cecil. And now I'm gonna do one that uh, it just fits in the time that we're living in tonight, today, every day, the world. Uh, I would encourage all you poets, your voices need to be heard. They carry a lot of weight. A lot of people listen. We are the war, war, word warriors. We will carry on the fight. They will not stop us. They will not end our words. They will not shut us up. We will prevail. Yes, we will. So with that said, case is my remix you will know what it is with much respect to Gil Scott Heron I am part of the conspiracy that conjures truth and knowledge and I am in this physical life born to a seeking voyage The truth above all else brings a new reality. Examine the examiner. Question the question. Because you see, you mustn't believe their lies. You have tuned in, plugged in, bought in, opted in, texted in, and Wi Fi in. But there will be no email notification when it begins. Because my brothers, the revolution will not be televised. And no, uh-uh, no, my sisters, no way. The revolution will not be digitized. The revolution will not be televised, digitized, matrixized, advertised, or any other eyes. It will not be. We got bushwhacked because Chad's were mechanized. And they gave us a war with no body bags. So toe tags can't be visual lives. Brought fear to panic and true political style, fattening up their war machines, smiley smiling all the while. Spewing visions of global democracies, politicized alibis, freedom fries, and gossip trivialities. As voices tweet in the faraway east, here in America, the censoring beast is alive and thriving, and spying and prying and flagging what you're posting. 
They have you Facebook, Twitter, and Google eyes. As you dream your life, whole life is size. You answered wise with smart lies. Blindly believing that freedoms are a guaranteed prize. Blindly believing that the world of the digitized is for private eyes. Unwittingly occupied and compromised, you got your cable TV and your digital Blu-ray to high speed deliver their delusions your way to keep you lost in confusion, stuck to illusion. Is it or is it not the same old thing in this, our America, land of the free? Where the orange man resident with a wig hat on lurks behind the curtain, perpetrating his con. We're pigs shooting down black folks all across our nation. Where whiteys wasting black folks is on news feed rotation. Where the cheesehead governor blocked the sites united, where Facebook friends are no longer cited with dissenting opinions and thinkers of free. Are amended and deleted. They simply cease to be in this, our America, land of hypocrisy. The revolution has been cloaked with lies as time flies. It's time to rethink time. Lie by lie. Break up from the ties and realize that truths have been disguised and sanitized. And the revolution will not be brought to you by MSN, CNN, or some bullshit called Fox. And the revolution will not be delivered to your door by Time Warner, Verizon, or Cox. And the revolution will not happen between some lives. And the revolution will not happen between Ms. Jones' lies. And the revolution will not be televised, televised, televised. And the revolution will not be digitized live. Because the revolution is not online. The revolution is in your mind, and it will be poeticized, and it will be improvised, and it will be realized, because the revolution is, because the revolution is, the revolution is, the revolution. With respect to Gil Scott Heron, that's my remix. So now I will leave you, we will leave you with hopefully a, a piece that will lighten the load, make you feel a little better, realize that we are all one family, we're all one world, we can all make a difference. So this piece is called Jump Man. If I were the junk man in Junkie Land, Picking up all the pieces that life left behind. I would paint the horizon and I would polish the moon for you alone. And I would sprinkle stardust above your dreams 
and fill them with waves of wonder and joy. If I were the junk man in Junkie Land. Peace, y'all. Thank you so much for coming. Lizzie, thank you so much for having us. Your beanie is a wonderful thing. We had a guest. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, you two are two of the best people I know. I'm so honored to call my friends. Please give a round of applause for that amazing, powerful set to Jane and Albie all. Make some noise for them. Huzzah! Wake up your yeah. neighbors, who cares? Do it! A, uh, they deserve nice. all the thank applause. That, I loved it. And I, it is such an honor to be your friend. You've opened your home to me and your hearts, and I always enjoy seeing you. Thank you both so, so much. Please yeah, give them you. a you know, the, the one good thing about the shitty COVID <coughs> situation is that we've all gotten to meet, that we've all gotten together, people that we never would have met Lizzie, it's been so cool to know you and hang out and take walks together and have coffee together. It's just been a joy. It really has. Yeah, it, you two are such a blessing in my life and this community is. And yes, I mean, I have made so many beautiful friendships and people I call family because of a pandemic. Um, yeah. And I, I'm so blessed. So yeah, it a really weird time turned into a blessing. And um, Y'all, please give them a follow. I dropped their websites and I will again um, in the chat and on Facebook. It's Jane Spoken Word on IG, Albion on Base on IG. And, you know, if we were in a club or at a cafe, we would go around and pass the hat around for our features. So if you can spare anything tonight, please, um, please do. And if you don't know how, you can get that to us and Marissa and I, we will get the, we will get the proceeds to Albion and Jane. Um, but if you can spare even just a couple of dollars, um, anything to help support the arts and the artists that put their heart and soul into their work, um, we all appreciate that. So thank you so much, Jane and Albie. I will drop the links in the chat for everyone again. Um, they're just, yeah, they're such wonderful people. I'm so grateful to call them my friends. And yeah, I, I look forward to seeing you again soon and hopefully at the cafe. Yes. Very soon. Um, the weather's beautiful too. So our walks are going to yeah. be very hanging. I know. Jane and I went, um, Jane and I, my grandmother grew up not far from where Jane and Albie live and where the New Rican is. And Jane was kind enough to walk with me to find where my grandmother grew up, which was um, very special. And we got some yummy blueberry turnovers and we've had a, we've had a nice time. So I look forward to more beautiful walks and seeing you both. Um, thank yes. you so much. Thank you all. Thank you for coming. Beanie, Thanks, thank everybody. you for having us. Thank you oh, all. Thank you. You are always more than welcome to feature here and come whenever you want anyone. And so that's to any, if anyone wants to feature here at Deadpan Dope, let me know, let Marissa know, and we'll get you on the mm -hmm. calendar. Um, we support all medium of arts. So whether it's poetry or music, or you have essays or dialogue, I'm a professional playwright. So if you have dialogue, you will play you want to do, please let us know. We, uh, we're happy to support you in that. Um, thank you so much. It's been a beautiful night. We're going to do a couple more open micers and then we will do the beanie blessing and we will bid you adieu. So up first, well on deck, we have a uh, generalissimo Brian Franco. He was driving earlier, but now he's home. But up to the mic now, she is in a beanie. She has pinched hit for me here on the word is right in dead pan dope. Uh, she is my sister, I love her dearly she is a part of the fierce 15 her book comes out this year i'm so proud of her and so excited to read it um please welcome to the mic for round two the one and only christy scribbles Woo -woo -woo! Is she, is she there wait she might have stepped away is she back christy there she is she's just busy sending me her manuscript so it's fine Y'all, you got to buy these books. You got to buy these books, y'all. It Like, I mean, there's so much talent writing in books, but when we did our launch for The Fierce 15 a few months ago, um, I, I my jaw was on the floor from the 
ridiculous amount of talent I heard coming out of these artists and, and poets and authors. And it is truly an honor to be published um, in this launch with them. And Christy is absolutely brilliant. You have to buy her book. She's my water sign twin. She's a Pisces, I'm a Cancer. So we see, we see each other, we get each other. Um, and she's got, and she rocks a beanie. She rocks a beanie. So please, please bless us with your words, Christy. Um, I forget what, oh, I wrote this in a cerebellum mental workshop. Um, it ripples, slowly it ripples around in my body. The body of flesh I sit inside now. It slowly makes its way around the skin of me, then encases the muscle of me, then encases the bone of me, and the truth of the feeling of it weaving its way around me truly astounds me. And around me now as I write this to you, it's up around the back of my head as it slithers round, down, back once again. The stream of the riverbed with the rocks causing bumps inside of my skin as the river it runs and bends and burns. It fucking hurts and it's so fucking uncomfortable. And it's always there no matter what the fuck I heal with. Just because maybe it gets a little shallower or runs a little less cold, but it's always there under the skin, always pulsing around me. Just so, just so everything looks, looks like it could be the worst day of your life. And that life is always strife and that tomorrow might not come, might get swept down the river of your youth in the mouth of that monster that now squishes inside the meat sack of me. Just because you can't see the flowing, it is always around forever to be found inside me, inside layers, Epiderm epidermis encasing it like a child's toy, smushing and sloshing and running around me, encases me, the fear me, that tethered me to that river me, that night me, that lost me, that lose him, the losing him, the lost him, the forgot him, the drowning him inside the skin of me forever be a part of the layer me, the liquid me, the melting me, the heart of me. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Christy <laughs> Woo. Oh, and awesome. just so y'all know, we're gonna be moving the great debaters to the first Saturday of the month. So if you are not doing anything, come hang Christy Scribbles and me. It'll be 9 p.m. I believe it's 9. We're going to do 9 p.m. Eastern, the first Saturday of the month. And The Great Debaters is such a fun show. It's a poetry writing workshop and show. So everyone who comes in gets split into two groups. You're given a prompt. You're given the pro or the con. And you're put into breakout rooms to write together as a group and then come back together and compete with your uh, with your point of view to try to battle it out. Uh, so for example, the uh, when we first did the show, we did cats versus dogs. And our, our resolve was cats are better companion animals than dogs and so you had you were given oh boo yeah but see gee it doesn't matter you you're given the pro or the con you have to write to that so it forces you to your critical thinking skills uh it forces you to kind of look at things from a different and and try to sway the judges uh to believe your point of view and of course the winner gets all the doll hairs uh winner gets all the marbles uh you get the bragging rights for the month uh and it's it's great so come if you have not done the great debaters yet christy's awesome and if you if you want to come and you want to um judge guest judge the debate that would be fun too can i just say brian's tongue is huge well I want to know, since you're my twin, can you touch the tip of your chin with your tongue, Marissa? Wait, Are say you, that again, G? Can you touch the tip of your chin with your tongue, like me, because we're twins? I can touch my nose and my tongue at the same time. Because because I, I looked at the medical records, <laughs> and I thought we were actually attached at the tongues. <laughs> I don't think about such things. See, Brian's <laughs> tongue, been, Brian's tongue could have been the. I, I don't think about such things. <laughs> Brian's tongue could have been the cover art for touching tongues. 
No, um, no. There, there is, we got I've Lick, Lick met, right around the corner. I've only met two other people who can touch their their tongue to the tip of their. See, you're not you're not going far enough, and they're both women, so it's, it's pretty long. But are they you know, are they single the queer women? Ryan, not the size. Uh, I I do not know what their orientation was because um, that wasn't um, appropriate to. I, our, I, I'm, our I'm kidding up. because I'm gay and you said they were really good with their tongues. So that's they could just touch <laughs> their tongue to the tip of their their chin. So yes, um, I mean that sounds good. That sounds good to me. Okay, let's stop talking about tongues. I, I, before I go, I just want to read something from the acknowledgments in my book. I, I hope you're still here, Jane, because um, I, I, I when I was writing the acknowledgments, it was something I didn't think I was going to really be able to do and then I just kind of went crazy with it I know Marissa said I had too much in there but I said that Jane spoken word Rusty Rose Martina McGowan Henry L. Jones and John McMullen are my newfound poetry heroes their senses of humanity and self-awareness and their writing inspires me I value the support encouragement and respect they have afforded me I look up to them as role models and examples of the type of human being I want to be and that is something that has happened during this pandemic is that I have been able to cross paths with people who are everything that I just won't, I don't, you know, I, I, that let me want to be more, want me, want me to be more myself and bring out the things in myself that I have yet to discover because, you know, we never stop doing that to ourselves. And uh, I tell you, the first time I saw Jane, she was without me. And then the next few times I saw Jane, uh, Albie wasn't there. And the next time I saw Jane with Albie was at the uh, at the live event at the uh, at the Wild Poet thing outside. And that was, oh my God, I got to hug Jane. I couldn't believe it. I was so excited. And Jane is just the most awesome, giving, loving human being. And Albie is so cool and giving and loving too. I mean, they are the greatest couple in the world. And I am so honored to know them both. Okay, I'm gonna just read two new poems and then get out and then uh, let it go over to whoever's next. Okay, so what did I have here? Oh, so those are two new poems. Okay, um, where are they? Bear with me, I'm at the end of this page. Oh. oh I wanna read that too, okay. Um, you know what, I'm gonna read this first though. The best support systems aren't bras or buttresses, but ears and crying shoulders. Bless everyone who told me I wasn't worth the dirt I walk on. Bless my parents who taught me optimism without a syllabus or formal classes. Bless my father who told me on multiple occasions, son, don't let the bastards get you down. What goes around always comes back round. I don't think the word karma ever passed through through Edward Morris Franco's lips. He married my mother. Bless my mother who allowed me to break her heart multiple times and punished me with hugs when she grounded me. Rita Ann Papman as Franco was a human surge protector. Bless every mistake I've made and repeated and learned from and became scars that became beauty marks and works of art only viewable by viewable by friends and lovers who aren't afraid to play. I'll show you mine if you show me yours and vice versa. And don't mind one-way conversations in times of crisis. And listening without talking back is the best conversation a situation demands. And just two more. The first one is called uh, Life is Like, oops trying to eat spaghetti with chopsticks. When I was a kid, spaghetti was a staple of the dinner menu. Mom served it once a week or once every other week. Dad's famous meat sauce was legendary. I rarely make pasta. All the boiling of the water. If I let it cook 30 seconds longer than al dente, its texture feels wrong to my teeth. Then there's spaghetti, linguine as well. <clears throat> if I break it in half before boiling, people will complain. When I order it at a restaurant, which rarely happens, if I cut the noodles rather than twirling them with a fork, I get accused of sacrilege or bad manners. I mean, doesn't it all end up in the, sa the same after I chew it? 
as a terribly uncoordinated person trying to twirl spaghetti is the same as intentionally deciding to have one third of the meal in, end up on the table rather than in my tummy. As someone whose mommy told him to eat everything on my plate because there are starving people in India, I prefer not to waste food. I've been told that if I traveled to Japan and asked for a fork and knife, it might be a cultural insult, despite that food will be wasted due to multiple motor disabilities, which causes my using chopsticks to cause a messy spectacle. Either way, I'm, I am a consciously messy eater. Lest I wear a bib, I never order chicken wings. I also tend to mix everything I put on my plate. Many friends and family members have commented on my sloppy eating. At least I don't talk with my mouth full of food. But if I point at my face or hold up a hand when someone talks to me while I'm eating, so I don't end up spitting food in their face, I'm somehow being rude or haughty. Once when I drank broth from a bowl of pho at a Vietnamese restaurant, my oldest brother said, manners, Brian, manners, in front of his tween son to make an example of me. I responded that in Asia, both slurping soup and drinking from the bowl are considered compliments to the chef. He said we were not in Asia. When I asked the waitress, she said it's okay in her family's restaurant and her father considers it a compliment, which made both my sister-in-law and nephew laugh. For people like me, chopsticks are torture devices. For people like me, not making a mess at the dinner table is like completing an obstacle course. For people like me, explaining my issues to allegedly normal people is basically like eating chicken wings without a bib. For people like me, the fact that I am people like me is a messy meal I can never eat and escape unscathed from. And I, this is a, my latest poem, How to Get Away with Public Nudity. When I read my poetry, I empty myself of me. I'm not pretending to be someone else. I'm not exactly stepping out of myself. Maybe I'm stripping bare without removing any clothing. Maybe the clothes I choose to wear are a costume I use to hide in plain sight. Maybe the words I commit to page that extol through voice are my version of streaking across the 50 yard line while Lady Gaga sings the Star Spangled Banner at the Super Bowl. When I empty myself of me, when I read my poetry, it's like tossing a deck of cards in the air and hoping the jokers land face up. Every day I wake up is a wild card that tries to learn its way out of being wild. When I empty myself of me, when I read my poetry, every time I play 52 pickup, I pick up the cards, put them back in the box, return to living life. And because I am a poet, I get to empty myself of me every time I write a new poem, if I choose. Thanks so much. And this Saturday, I will be featuring at Dumping Grounds. I'll put all the information into the chat. Thank you, uh, Lizzie, for this wonderful opportunity. And uh, thank you, Marissa, for creating the word is right and letter green books. Yay, Jenna uh, Lizzie, though, my twin. Our birthday is coming up in July. We're going to do a birthday bash. Yes, we. I, I wrote you guys a, a twin poem last year, so I'll write one again. We'll have. Yeah, I always, I always love hearing Brian. I love you so much. We've gotten to meet in person many times. He's a wonderful person, wonderful uh, poet and artist. Check out his book with Writer Green Books. He's also a part of our Out Loud LGBTQ anthology. Proud to have him in that and. He also hosts Cafe Generalissimos on the first and third Mondays of the month here in our Word is Right family. Um, and check him out at Dumping Grounds, like he said, at the New York and Poets Cafe. And um, what's your, your, I know you're Generalissimo Brian Frank on Facebook, but anywhere else you want to? Oh, yeah. It's, just, it's G N R L S S M O on Instagram. And if you spell <laughs> it out, Marissa, it sounds like Generalissimo. <laughs> Well, we love. We I want to have him. dinner with him. That's all I can say. He's a great dinner companion. I, I have bet. had dinner with him. Well, well you know, have dinner with Warshark because I know that Warshark has has uh, very very successful dinner parties. Oh, it'll we, be fun. We're gonna we a feast. Totally do it. Gee, we're coming to New York in in September, Warshark. You should just come. Uh, I should. You're right. We should all meet up. Yeah, yeah. Come for the New York Poetry Festival, or you guys can fly to San Francisco, and we can have a vegan feast in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Always a good time. Uh, 
fall is a great time to come to San Francisco. That's our best weather. I'll be at the tail end of July, but um, in but the, I've, never been, I've never been to California. I've never been to California. Lizzie, be sure you bring your layers if you're coming in July. because <laughs> Y'all should I just mean, come to New Mexico. It's like right in between. I mean, yeah. you know, it has to be like 100 degrees for me to take my beanie off. It is. It was 98 <laughs> degrees today, and it's but it's beautiful. Clear skies, 300 days a year, sunshine, almost no rain, no humidity, no bugs. It's great. The best. She wants me to. She tells That's me like every other work. day. Five thousand feet. We're sitting right about 5,500 at my house. She I'm tells me like Route 56. Let's go. She tells me like every other day because I'm also a realtor to go get my real estate license in New Mexico and be her neighbor and buy a house there. <laughs> the and house I'm like, the oh for my me. god! He'll sell, it, he'll sell it to you. It's a gorgeous house. Uh, it's a three bedroom, two bath a house. <laughs> Small yard, small <laughs> rock, right? It's all rock. Nothing grows here. Uh, not nothing, but you. Why the fuck would you water like a grass here? If we're the Do you desert? grow chili peppers? And Actually, I have a big garden. I have a huge garden. My whole yard is so beautiful, you guys. Cool. Yes, it is. We don't grow grass for fun here. We grow plants for eating. We don't grow grass for fun. I just cool. want to relay something else that happened when I met I grow Elf, grass for fun. Jane in person. Is that? <laughs> yeah. When, when I met Albie and Jane in person, um, the first time, because they were also, y'all were also there that <coughs> night at Neo, but when there was that outdoor stage, Albie backed up a bunch of other poets besides Jane, and I got to have be backed up by Albie, and that was really cool. Yeah, he's always kind it was enough dope. to do that. Yeah, I want to, I, yeah, wanna, it was I, dope I aspire to that. I want to make one of those, uh, one of those little things where I sit at the kitchen table and, and Albie does his bass and, and records me. Just like there you just, go. That that's like, how we just, did. That's just, how he did the uh, Miguel, recording with Miguel Algodon. Miguel yes, said, "I have that. I have that CD, and it is so incredible. It's like a poetry tour de force. It's wonderful. It is. It's dope. It's 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 phenomenal. And and you know, Miguel sat at our table, smoked a whole lot of joints, drank a whole <laughs> lot of wine, told a whole lot of stories of the fucking poets back then." And that recording is just so wonderful. And he loved it. He absolutely loved it. Well, you know, you could hear the love in the whole thing, but just yeah. the, the connection Albie and Miguel had. Yeah. Albie, Albie, you know, he he just has this vibe with poets that blows me away. He's amazing. You both are. We're we're so lucky to have. Yeah, I hope to see it at both at the cafe soon. There'll be a though. There's hybrid on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm only uh, be there for a little bit. So yeah. So and then on uh, and then of course in September, I am sure. I hope that you and I will be around during the uh, poetry festival at least. And if you're not at the poetry festival, we are. We will find our way to just having a meal together or just hanging out because I can't wait. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll probably go. We'll probably go from. Governor's Island straight to the cafe because I imagine they'll like I imagine there'll be a hybrid that night. I have heard that there we're is we're gonna need to have some sort of food. Like we're gonna have to have a team dinner <laughs> somehow. Don't forget well, to eat you guys. There's, there's everything on the <laughs> lower I think we need everything to find on the lower east side. There's everything yeah. on the lower east side to everything. eat. I mean it's yeah, every you can um there's cats. Cats okay, well, yes, there there is. Is. Well, I hear <laughs> But we need to find somewhere to eat. It's as, not that it's not as busy as Russ and Daughters, which is right now. I hope they're going to have some sort of like I don't know. I, I'm gonna be there a week. I'm gonna be there seven days. I have a list of places I'm <coughs> eat. I'm coming well, in on eat. Wednesday, and I'm not leaving till Tuesday. You can have a high time. You can't eat in, you, can you eat in at Russ and Daughters? I didn't think you could. They have a restaurant down, not in the main but if you go like a little further down on orchard street mm -hmm. um they have a cafe that you can sit in and eat at yeah mm -hmm. there's this place called they eat it on the sidewalk when i when i when i was walking around and i wrote that exactly in Tompkins 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 square park um i wanted to eat lunch at this it was this mexican restaurant called el sombrero and it, it was <laughs> It just it was a big place it was pretty nondescript when i used to go there in the 90s but it was just this great mexican restaurant that was totally unpretentious and wonderful 
Yeah, it's still, I, they have chains now. Well, are there, I don't, I've never been to Governor's Island, but do they have food vendors at the festival? Or if not, I mean, you can probably, do, oh, they do? Okay, so yeah, they can, you probably have like food trucks or something and then. I'm sure they're going to have something. I mean, they're, they're going to have something. And we can all like do breakfast if we want before and then go over. I'm going to need coffee. I'm gonna need coffee, so I'm fine. And you're in New coffee. York. You'll find a you'll Somewhere find coffee. In. There's Harlem a Starbucks and, and bodega every <laughs> twelve seconds. There's yeah. I want God. You know what? I want I want to go eat at the Halal Brothers. I want to find out if the Halal Brothers are still doing their cart, and I want to go. <laughs> eat the Halal yeah, Brothers. Go to a Adele across from Radio City Music Hall. That was really good. They have the Halal guys Famous are Adele. like. I think it's the halal guys you're thinking of, but they are like every other block. I gotta, I gotta have some of that in the white sauce. Well, I will tell you, um, when I when we had that show at the Neo in August, and we were we were rained in because of the storm for a little while. I went down to the corner to the bodega and got this amazing sandwich. I got them to make <laughs> me a sandwich with grilled chicken on a I think it's cocoa roll or whatever Jamaican cocoa roll, and with all the with all these toppings, and it was insanely good. Yeah, yeah, just I all the China stuff they. Italy and. Oh, like, Chinatown! Oh, I miss oh. I miss all the China. Yeah, I, I used to. Yeah, a whole China. week. I'm there a whole week. Y'all gotta feed me. <laughs> well, you're gonna be in Harlem. Like Harlem has really great food. I used to live not far from where you live. in Harlem is on my list. It's on yeah, my list. Cornbread. Yeah, there's oh, really I, good food. I've been ramen. You know, you know like, these. You know these are all my. I, these are all my hangs. You know that. Oh my right? god! Every, Steven. Steven doesn't live far from me. Steven I mean, on a regular basis. This, like twenty. You know. Steven lives like twenty blocks from me. It's so uh, good that I, he. Needs I, yeah. Right by everything. What I, neighborhood? I, I, are all in? those places are, are iconic. They're great. What neighborhood are you in, and Steve? Upper West Side. Okay. He lives like twenty blocks from me. Yeah. But it's, it's everything you're describing. It, it's. It just makes New York, it's part of the joy of New York. New York is awesome. I'm so excited. Yeah. My favorite is Little India, which is by Baruch. Yeah, I like, I mean, Indian food's my favorite. But there's also great Indian food. Are you food talking about on, on 6th Street or the India, the Little that's India? Not like, 6th Street is not like that anymore. Those no, it's like gone. East 23rd or something. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. it was like near Murray Hill, right? I remember yeah, it's that in Murray, it's in Gramercy. Yeah, yeah uh, there was a place that I used to like to go. It was uh, where a lot of taxi drivers went to. And uh, best places to go. Oh All my right. well, god, the best non bread. Well, we're gonna take the food discussion to our after party because it's <laughs> eleven o'clock. But we can talk about it when uh, the Facebook goes off. So if you want to join us, find the Zoom link, and we'll have our after party and talk more about New York City. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to host Ed Pando. As always, I want to thank Jane, Spoken Word, and Albie. Uh, for featuring love you both so much thank you to all the artists that read tonight and came to support um and to close us out on our live feed jane will read beanie blessings we close out our time together staring up at the same sky whether the sun kisses down on your face the cotton candy clouds begin to swirl in the e early evening the crescent moon fades in as the constellations begin to dance throughout the night. We all look up at the same sky. Thank you for blessing the sky, soil beneath our feet, and our family with your presence and art. Thank you for taking the time to create. Thank you for holding space. May you squirt out poems kitty style in dreamland. May we always have beanies to keep us warm and stylish. This has been the Deadpan Dope Tuesday Open Mic with the Word is Right, hosted by the amazing, ridiculous, awesome Deadpan Dope, Lizzie the Beanie God. On behalf of our community, I, Jane Spoken Word, and Albie Owen Bass, bid you adieu. Until next time, beanie blessings and peace. Beanie blessings. <laughs>